welcome everyone today. Um, we're going to be talking about St. Louis and we have a wonderful panel. So let me go ahead and share my screen and we can get started. Okay. Everyone see my screen? Great. All righty. So like I said, today we're going to be talking about um, the St. Louis community. We already saw that so many people are Zooming in from across the world and across the country. So we know if you're considering coming to the Brown School, you might not know a lot about St. Louis. You might have probably have never been here. So we're hoping to unravel some of that mystery for you and give you a good sense of um, what our community is like. So just a little overview of what the agenda today. Um, we're gonna start with introductions from our panelists. Um, then I'm gonna do a quick overview of the city, um, just give you a little bit of um, information about St. Louis, some helpful stuff to know, um, help you get your bearings a little bit um, with the community. And then we'll dive into our panel Q and A and we'll talk about working and living in um, the St. Louis community. And then at the end, we'll save some time for live question and answer time. So um, as we're going through, I would, invite anyone to put um, questions that you have into the chat um, or the Q&A, actually preferably put your um, questions into the Q&A so we can identify them as questions. Um, some of our staff members and current students who work in our office will be looking at the chat and answering some as we go through, but then um, we'll be marking some to answer live at the end as well. So please feel free to put any kind of questions that you have into the Q&A box. And with that, we will dive into introductions. So we have a wonderful panel, like I said, with us here today. So I would love for everyone to just introduce themselves. If you could share your name, um, your role at the Brown School, just a little bit about your background with St. Louis and how you came to the Brown School. So Atia, would you like to start? Welcome everyone and peaceful greetings uh, to everyone from around the world, around the nation and around St. Louis. Um, my name is Atia Thurman. I'm a lecturer at the Brown School, but my history with the Brown School goes back several, two decades at least when I was a student here studying social and economic development. And that was my concentration. And I stayed in St. Louis, surprising myself. I am, I was, I had lived in St. Louis since I was about 13 or 14. So not quite born and raised, but I am definitely a St. Louisan now, and it is my home, and I'm proud to call it home. But when I was a student, I thought I would leave, and there were just so many opportunities that kept me here. And honestly, I never really a picture that I would one day come back and work at the Brown School, but it's been such an incredible journey, returning to essentially my roots, and now getting the chance to work with students in their field placements, to support them and advise them, and then also to continue to build community in St. Louis and then just really helping to shepherd in this like this these next generation of social change agents. Very exciting. So glad to be here and welcome. Thank you, Atia. Um, Kate, I'll pass it to you. Thanks, Shana. Um, thank you everyone for being here. I'm so excited to uh, share this time with you all. My name is Kate Barbier. My pronouns are she and her, and I am the master's in public health a field faculty member and also a lecturer at the Brown School teaching some public health courses. Um, and although I have only been at the Brown School since September, my roots like Atia's go back further. I am not an alum. I am a proud graduate of St. Louis University, but I um, completed my dual MSW MPH there and have worked, had the pleasure of working with uh, folks from around the St. Louis community. Um, since I came to SLU for undergrad quite a while ago and have always really um, found good challenges, and we were talking about good trouble before, uh, in my work here in and with communities, um, first as a direct practice social worker, and then moving into healthcare social work and public health, um, and then working on regional behavioral health projects. 
um, and always holding a special place in my heart and finding joy in working with MSW and MPH students in their practicum settings in the community. And now I find that joy in working with students to help them navigate that process as well as um, learning together with them in the classroom. Thank you, Kate. I know we're all very happy to have you here. Um, Elizabeth, I know you're logging in. Let me see if I can turn the mute off for you. We're having some technical difficulties. Oh. Hi, oh. I think that's it. Perfect. Great, thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Fuchs. I use she, her pronouns. I also work on the field team and I work with folks in violence injury prevention. I teach social policy analysis and evaluation. I also teach the social work practice with LGBTQIA plus populations. And today I come to you live from the Missouri State Capitol where I am here building momentum around a love rally to um, combat some of the anti-LGBT legislation in our state. And uh, we've got a lot of work to do. We're not gonna stop. And so come and join us. I love that, Elizabeth, a call to action. Um, and then Jarrell? Yes, yes, uh, good evening, afternoon, morning, depending on where you are. Um, my name is Darrell Smith. I am also in the field of education department. I focus on social economic development. I teach courses in social economic development, uh, particularly uh, East St. Louis um, development and redevelopment. But I'm excited to be here with you to discuss um, the community and getting involved with the community. Um, I am an alumni, uh, proud alumni of the Brown School of Social Work. Uh, and what else can I, what else was I supposed to say? I'm from California, which I'm very proud of, West Side, uh, and I'm happy to be here with you. Thanks, Darrell. You, I think you had everything. <laughs> Um, and then we're going to move on to our students. So we have two current Brown School students with us today, um, Felicity and Courtney. So I would love for the two of you to also introduce yourselves and if you could just share your name, pronouns, concentration or specialization, um, and your hometown as well. Um, welcome everyone. I'm so happy about the international representation in our attendant, attendance today. Very proud international student as well. Uh, my name is Felicity. I use they, she pronouns. Uh, I'm currently pursuing my second year of MSW study concentrating in mental health. Uh, my hometown is Shanghai, China. So I, I saw some Chinese names in the attendance. So welcome everyone. And it's very late, I know, um, but so glad that you all are here. Hey everyone, my name is Courtney. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm a second year master's of public health student. Currently, um, my specialization is epidemiology and biostatistics. So a little bit more on the data side. And I am originally from a little bit outside of Denver, Colorado, but I have been in St. Louis for a little over five years now. So welcome and it's great to meet you all. Wonderful. Thank you all so much um, for introducing yourselves and for joining us today. We just have a wonderful um, wealth of expertise here. So I'm excited to get into our questions. Um, the first thing that I want to do, though, is just give everyone a little bit of an overview of St. Louis, Missouri, just to kind of, like I said earlier, give you a sense of what our city is all about and what you can expect here. I'm gonna go through um, some of the great things about our city and also some of the challenges, um, which are also opportunities for all of the students who are, are here already and are going to come here in the fall. So first of all, um, St. Louis is the little red dot there. We are right in the middle of the country, um, right on the border of Illinois and Missouri, St. Louis, um, 
But like I said, we border right there. Missouri is a, a state that's right in the middle of the United States. Um, we border eight other states, which I actually learned this year. I felt kind of silly that I didn't know that before, but we're right here in the center of the country and border eight other states. St. Louis um, is an amazing city. I've lived here for, I'm from this area. I guess I didn't really tell you anything about myself, but I'm from this area as well. Um, and I've lived here for about 10 years now. So I want to start with all the positives about St. Louis. Um, lots of fun facts too. So um, first of all, if you are a sports fan, you will not be disappointed when you come here. <laughs> so St. Louis is definitely a sports town, um, home to major sports teams. The, we have a baseball team. We have a hockey team. We also now have a professional soccer team, which everyone's very excited about, um, and also an XFL team, which I didn't know what that was until recently. Um, and so there's some pictures of our sports stadiums there on the left. We did have a request um, come in before the um, webinar to kind of explain what the pictures are for anyone um, who needs that. Um, that additional explanation. So we have a couple of pictures of our sports stadiums on the left here, and then moving clockwise around um, the top picture is of the 1904 World's Fair, which St. Louis is pretty famous for. Um, that introduced the world, here's some fun facts, that introduced the world to the x-ray machine and the ice cream cone. Um, St. Louis also has more free world-class attractions than any other place in the nation outside of Washington, D.C., so lots of um, great cultural things that you can do here. Um, we have a picture of the History Museum, a picture of the Art Museum with all of the tulips in bloom. Um, going down, we have a picture of the Science Center. Um, and then um, St. Louis is also home to the Missouri Botanical Gardens, which is the picture um, with all the purple. There's some purple flowers and a big garden there. That's one of um, the world's largest gardens. It's the nation's oldest botanical garden in operation. Um, St. Louis is also home to world-class performing arts centers, including the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra, the Fox Theater, um, and the St. Louis Muni, which is the largest outdoor musical theater in North America. Um, and then Forest Park is the picture on the bottom here, um, that big, beautiful park with the sunset. Um, Forest Park is actually the largest urban park in the country. It's bigger than um, Central Park in, in New York City. Um, the fun thing, one of the great things is that Forest Park is right across the street from Washington University and the Brown School. So very, very accessible to students here. Um, it has 47,000 trees. I learned a lot of information in preparation for this um, info session. I tried to find a lot of fun facts for you. So over 1,300 acres and 47,000 trees, and it's been named the country's best city park for the past two years. Um, and then if you like parks in the outdoors, St. Louis has over 100 parks, and Missouri as a state has over 1,000 miles of hiking trails across the state. Um, so you all have also heard me say the word free a lot when describing these locations. Um, St. Louis is uh, one of the most affordable cities in the country. It's co pretty consistently named one of the most affordable places to live. A lot of these attractions are free or they have opportunities for free seats. So that's another um, important thing that you should know about St. Louis. Wanted to help everyone get their bearings a little bit more here with like where Washington University and the Brown School are. So St. Louis is often referred to as a city of neighborhoods. There, um, there on the left, there's a map of um, just the border here where St. Louis, um, Missouri is on the left and Illinois is the state on the right. And then the Mississippi River runs right through the two. So St. Louis is the, um, is the area right on the banks of the river there. Um, as you zoom in, um, you'll see it, that picture of um, the, the, the city of St. Louis is kind of that P, um, that P shape and all the neighborhoods are there. And then on the right is a picture um, with all of the neighborhoods uh, names on them. So like I said, 79 different neighborhoods, each of them has sort of its own distinct style characteristics. Some neighborhoods, um, you know, are on the rebound. Um, and I think we'll talk about that a little bit more as we get into the Q&A. Um, others have remained stable for decades and then others are sort of striving for, for renewal. So this is just the city. Um, the St. Louis region actually also includes the county and all the municipalities and cities that surround the city here. 
So where is the Brown School? We are actually right on the border of the city and the county. So at the, the bottom picture here is a picture of the Brown School, beautiful building. Um, you can see that big, the big rectangle um, right next to us, as I mentioned before, is Forest Park, um, that huge park. And then I wanted to also kind of show where City Hall is, which is more downtown towards the river. Um, Going up in the right-hand corner, you can see a picture of Washington University School of Medicine. Um, this is, of course, part of the Washington University campus. Um, it's a place where perhaps if you're um, an NPH student, you might do your practicum there. You might have a part-time job there. So I wanted to point that out as well. Um, and then the final picture up here in the left-hand corner is a picture of Ferguson, Missouri. So that I wanted to really mention that because um, I would be remiss to talk about St. Louis without mentioning Ferguson, Missouri. Ferguson um, is a northern suburb of St. Louis. It's about eight miles, 20 minute drive um, from WashU. It is, as many people know, the site of the murder of Michael Brown in 2014, um, which prompted weeks of protest. It brought a lot of national and even international attention to the St. Louis area and um, to the Black Lives Matter movement. So after the events in Ferguson, um, the city developed um, a lot of responses to those events to, to sort of address um, some of the systemic issues that, that led to those events. So things like the Ferguson Commission, um, which is a board of community representatives that has really worked to examine the Ferguson events um, and make region-wide recommendations for change. So that's been going on for the past 10 years. Um, a lot of the work that the Brown School does um, is tied to that type of work as well. All right. And finally, I wanted to get into a few numbers just to give you um, a bit of an overview of some important demographics and statistics in the St. Louis area related to social work, social policy, and public health. So um, I know that every student who attends the Brown School is interested in social change and the betterment of the community. So like I said, St. Louis is an amazing city in many ways. I think all of our panelists would agree with that, um, but we certainly have challenges that people in our community are, are working to address. So um, I think it's coming here as a student is a great opportunity to learn from staff, learn from faculty, learn from community members in your practicum who are doing you know, that active work and they're deeply embedded in their communities. And um, I think it's just a really amazing opportunity to see, to see some of this work at play and, and to learn um, how to do it yourselves. So. Um, first of all, you can see the age breakdown of our city. Um, two thirds are young adults, um, middle age adults, and then the other third are children or older adults. Um, I've also included um, a breakdown of the city's um, race and Hispanic origin. So you can see um, we're pretty equally um, a black or African-American and white community. And then we have um, some, um, a fairly good amount of um, international populations represented as well. Um, again, these statistics, not comprehensive. I just wanted to pull out a few things to give people an idea um, of what the city is like, the people who live here. Um, so many of the efforts in St. Louis are directed towards poverty alleviation. Um, according to the US Census, the poverty rate in, Saint, in the St. Louis region in 2021 was 11%. Um, in the city itself, the poverty rate is actually higher. It's closer to 20%. So a lot of work being done to um, alleviate and address those um, concerns. Um, poverty, of course, continues to disproportionately affect people of color and families of color. Um, in 2021, the poverty rate in St. Louis among Black residents was over three times higher than the poverty rate among white residents. And then childhood poverty also continues to be an enormous problem in St. Louis um, and estimated, as you can see, an estimated 40% of children in St. Louis are born into poverty. And then the picture, um, the picture here just depicts um, some rundown um, sort of abandoned buildings in St. Louis with the words um, potential is just half uh, painted on them to kind of bring awareness to the, to the idea that um, Potential is just how there's also a lot of systemic um, and historical problems that lead to um, some of the challenges in our city, such as poverty. 
In terms of public health, uh, St. Louis has some top hospitals, some of the top hospital systems in the country. So um, while I think some of the public health challenges can be significant, there are already really great resources um, being used to address them. So um, first of all, low birth rate is a common indicator of maternal health. In 2019, St. Louis's low birth rate was 10.3%, um, which was nearly 40% higher than the state rate through the rest of Missouri. Um, and then uh, Again, talking about equity, um, when comparing race and ethnicity, Hispanics had a 43% higher rate and of low birth rate, and African American women had a 7% higher rate. Um, firearm violence remains a threat to both children and adults in our region. It's a top concern in the region. Um, for the three year period ending in 2019, St. Louis's firearm death rate was over four times the rate um, as the rest of the state. And then um, finally, the state's uh, largest hospital system um, did a pretty comprehensive review of the community health needs in our region. And they named um, for 2022, they named the following as the top community health needs. So mental health, maternal and infant health, heart health and diabetes. Um, and then the picture that's here is of a farmer's market in St. Louis called Soulard Farmer's Market. It's one of the oldest, if not the oldest, farmer's markets in the city, um, downtown. Um, oh my gosh, must have hundreds of vendors. It's, a, it's um, seasonal and, um, you know, brings farmers and, and local, um, local growers from, from all over the region. So a really cool thing to check out if you come here. And then finally, um, I wanted to provide a little bit of a breakdown of the voting patterns in the last presidential election. So just to Elizabeth, um, I'm sure has a lot more that she can add about this, but she said she's in Jefferson City right now, which is our state capital, um, doing work. And there is a, a lot of work to be done here because we are, just to be frank, we are a blue city and a red state. And so you can see here that um, St. Louis City does lean pretty heavily Democratic and liberal, whereas the state of Missouri as a whole um, tends to lean more Republican. And you can see how that compares to the voting pattern um, patterns in the rest of the United States there. So um, that makes for some challenges, as Elizabeth said, and I think um, a lot of opportunities as well. So that is what I have for you in terms of the overview of our city. Um, we're ready to dive into some panelist Q and A. So these pictures, I have to say, first of all, the pictures, just to explain them. The first one is the art museum again, which is in Forest Park. The second one is a picture of the St. Louis Arch um, overlooking the city. And then of course, the third picture is another picture of Forest Park um, in the fall when all the trees are really beautifully colored. So I'm actually gonna stop sharing my screen here. So we can see everyone. And I would love to dive into some questions here. So staff and faculty, first question for you. Um, can you tell us a little bit about a project or initiative you're working on in the St. Louis community? What are the goals? Um, what are some successes or challenges that you've encountered? And any, anyone who wants to start can start. Maybe Jarrell. <laughs> you look like you have something to say. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. I was like, she's just going to call me out. Yeah. Um, so we have some really cool, awesome initiatives that we're doing here in the field of, um, department. We have something that we're developing called field units, where each student, if you're getting your master's degree in social work or your master's in public health, you have to do um, so many hours of practice um, learning by being involved with uh, different organizations within the city and county. Um, and so what we've been putting together, it, for me, I've been putting together what's called a SED field unit. And it is to bring together all of the students who are in a geographic area doing different work in different organizations to make it more comprehensive. How can we do more collaboration um, to have a greater impact? And so I don't know if you've ever heard of East St. Louis, um, but because St. Louis and Illinois um, are on the border of the river, we do a lot of work in East St. Louis. Um, and I know that many have had a, 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 you know, a certain narrative about 
uh, this place, but there's so much work that's being done through different organizations. There's so much history there and there's so much progress. And so we're excited to have students involved with city management. We're working with Kokia Heights, which is a new area that was once three very small uh, villages per se, because the population was very low. And now they're, they're their own city. Um, and we're working on strategic planning. We're working with the city of Ferguson. Um, we work with mayors and city managers, and we're doing some really high level civic engagement. Um, and so if that's something that you're interested in, um, we are doing that work here. Thanks, Darrell. And I will also, you, that reminded me that um, the Brown School, um, part of our strategic plan and um, sort of like the, the things that we're doing is that the Brown School has identified certain areas in St. Louis that are priority areas, um, East St. Louis being one of them. So that's where um, we've identified um, these are areas where we're committed to, to doing work and investing our, our time and our resources. Shana, I'm happy to chime in also. So in one of my roles in field faculty um, in the field education team is working with students who are in the children, youth, and families concentration and also the social impact leadership concentration. So a fun story, a Monday I got to be a guest lecturer in one of my colleagues' class and I got to tell this really great story about early childhood education in St. Louis. And this is, um, this is a story of like hope and progress and success. And so, um, Many, many years ago, this predates all of us, but there's been like many movements to bring to to both bring high, high quality early childhood education and make it more equitable and also to sustain it through public funding. And so just to give you a sense, if anyone is interested in children and studying children, zero to five is the most critical years. And your experiences in zero to five essentially um, lay a blueprint for how you may experience life um, for the rest of your life and into adulthood. So we have this small window to make a big impact on families and children. And one of the things we found several years ago through a series of about four or five reports and efforts that were sort of like for the sake of all, forward through Ferguson, first steps to equity. We all understood that there was a really big gap and specifically an economic and a racialized equity gap in who was getting um, high quality early childhood education. And so there's been some incredible community building and community organizing. And in the last couple of years, both the, the city first, um, just want to give a kudos, passed um, just a wonderful proposition to publicly fund high quality early childhood education. And we're seeing some amazing work happen in terms of coordinating efforts. And then the county followed a couple of years later. Um, and as a result of COVID, actually COVID really highlighted and exposed just how precarious and vulnerable the early childhood care and education system was and how much it had mattered to like workforce development and quality of life. So when COVID came and we saw just how stark um, those gaps were, the county also responded eventually. I think that's huge because we don't, we have some, we don't have a ton of examples in the United States of cities and counties actually um, supporting public funding for early childhood. It's still considered like privatized, right? So that's like a great success story. And we had WashU students and WashU faculty and WashU staff all part of that effort. And a, a large part of it, of the support came from Clark Fox Policy Institute, which is located here in the Brown School. And I used to be the associate director for it. But also we had students who were part of We Powers Tomorrow Builders and we had staff and, and it's just been incredible. And we've had faculty who've been supporting the work for years. So that's just one example. If you are interested more in um, educational equity, I would say another great site that I want to just plug here because there's way too many, but one I want to plug that's right here on the campus of Washington University, and it's the Institute for School Partnership. And the associate director is none other than a Brown School alum. <laughs> so if you want to look it up, um, Institute for School Partnership is doing some incredible work around high quality education and equity for the region and the associate director is Nikki Doty. Um, she's actually gonna be here, I think this week talking to students in person <laughs> for career services about practicum opportunities. So those are just some examples. Um, really, like I said, too many to name, hundreds of practicum sites and even more different 
hundreds of practicum sites and probably like thousands of combinations of relationships and the network of humans that are doing this work and that are connected into the Brown School, deep connections to the Brown School. Oh, thank you, Felicity. Yes, <laughs> just Felicity put a link in the chat. Um, yeah, but we we are the network. So when we talk about change agents and things happening, it's our sites, it's our students, it's our alum, it's our faculty and staff. It's um, we're an integral part of what's happening in St. Louis. Thank you, Atia. And I mean, you're so right. I think St. Louis is a big city, but it's also a small city and very connected. <laughs> we're all not in agreement. <laughs> very connected. Um, so I think you know a lot of students do get super involved in the community while they're here doing their their practicum work, and then they they stay here and they they continue to invest in the community. Um, Elizabeth or Kate, I'd love to hear anything that you all have to say about projects or initiatives you're working on. Can go ahead. Oh, well, I was just gonna say. So I hear me okay. Is there an echo? We can hear you, okay. Elizabeth. Okay. Um, one of the greatest outcomes from the Dobbs decision on June twenty fourth, twenty twenty two, was that the university created initiatives around reproductive justice and ways that we can both support the frontline efforts of what's happening on at the micro level, um, supporting our community organizations that are supporting people who are trying to access reproductive care in places where it has been eliminated or marginalized. And so we've created these opportunities for students to engage with a field unit working with organizations and also working at the policy level, um, working on sexual health, sexual health education, uh, policy, legislative policy, institutional policy, safety planning for people who may want to access abortion care. Um, that's one of the most, I think, important initiatives coming out of field education right now. How are we going to care for people in the absence of critical health care. We just want initiative. I also want to just plug that all of the initiatives that are happening within Washington University or the Brown School, this is kind of like coming to boot camp. You're gonna come here to learn the skills that you need to go out all over the world and implement change. And so this is a really fertile ground for learning. The St. Louis community is the classroom. I learned that from Professor Smith. <laughs> I love that, Elizabeth. Um, fertile ground. I think like I couldn't have, I can't think of a better phrase <laughs> to describe um, this St. Louis and um, yeah, that's, that's a great phrase. I think I'm going to steal that. <laughs> um, Kate, I wanted to give you the opportunity. Uh, well, I have recently had the pleasure. Oh, I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I'm not sure what happened there. <laughs> I have recently had the pleasure to join Elizabeth and the other amazing colleagues at the Brown School on the Reproductive Justice Field Unit. Um, and so helping them think through that work from a public health perspective has been already um, a good challenge and, and bringing, um, bringing light to all kinds of reproductive justice issues across the life cycle for folks um, is, is really critical. Um, and um, as I grow into my role here at, as public health faculty, I look forward to, to taking on um, more work with more initiatives, particularly exploring the impact of racial and health equity on the public health program and how it relates to how we see field work. 
um, and how we prepare students to go out into the field um, and not, you know, colonize practica experiences and really work with communities and partners to engage in um, meaningful, sustained change um, that they get to really lead the way in. If, if I can, I wanted to add to that. Um, really, coming to this program will be quite overwhelming because of the variety and vast opportunities there are to get involved with whatever you want to do. I know when I was a student here, you know, having to just decide what concentration you wanted to focus on, you may enter into the program saying, hey, I want to work it and do direct practice, but then find out as you start to take your courses and working with colleagues and talking to the, our, our world-class faculty um, and researchers here, you might find yourself saying, I wanna switch or change my you know, concentration or specialization, but there's such a vast variety of opportunity to learn, to grow and to push limits. I know as a student here, I created some things, uh, uh, some opportunities in terms of international practicum that I wanted to do. I did independent study, working with a faculty member that, um, of my choosing to you know, really focus on a project that mattered to me. Um, and so even if you don't find yourself um, plugging into what we already have as quite an array of opportunity, you can create one. Um, you can individualize your, your, your study uh, and, and, and work in transdisciplinary. You, know, you can work in other graduate schools. A lot of our students are dual degree students. They may go to Olin and get their master's of business. Um, also, the law school here is wonderful. Um, and so it's such a great place in terms of, you know, taking advantage of all of the opportunities that you may have. The last thing I just wanted to add to this one question is that, yes, like Elizabeth said, St. Louis is a great place to learn. Um, it has a lot to offer in terms of just being a citizen here um, and being in the community. And it also has a lot of disparity. You know, it has a long history of um, leading the country in discrimination, but also efforts of progress. Um, and so it's such a great place um, if you're, you're a student that's very curious about how institutions function and work and how you may be able to intervene. So I just wanted to add that. Thank you, Gerald. Those are all, yeah, great points. Um, there's a lot of opportunities here, and I think um, the curriculum and the programs here are, re are really designed to be flexible and really designed for, for you as a student to learn and really, you know, explore what you're interested in and um, have mentors who are, you know, faculty members or staff or whoever have mentors like teach you and guide you and, um, you know, really, really develop you as a, as a student, as a practitioner. Um, Thank you all for sharing that. I would love to jump to our students, Courtney and Felicity. Um, we've talked about practicum a little bit. Um, would love to hear about your practicum experiences. Can you tell us um, the site you the site you chose or are currently working in? Why you chose it? What kind of work are you doing in the St. Louis community? I can I can go ahead um, for my foundation practicum. I work with the psychiatric department at Washington University uh, School of Medicine and the center work with eating disorder prevention intervention, but also pediatric obesity intervention prevention. Um, I love the work there. I'm passionate about eating disorder intervention. Um, so the, the site that I work with had a lot of research opportunities that exposed me to some of the, we did a lot of like online, uh, affordable intervention for eating disorder. Um, but we also do a lot of advocacy work. We started a misery eating disorder council, and now I'm working for them part-time. So doing a lot of training facilitation, uh, doing a lot of advocacy work in the Missouri uh, state. And now we are expanding one of our program to teenagers as well. Um, and that's one of the effort that we're working on. In the past, we only provide free eating disorder treatment to Missouri adults but now we're providing it to adolescents as well. So that's very exciting. Uh, currently I'm working for 
the Child Advocacy Center at Greater St. Louis. So I do a lot of direct practice with children who've undergone trauma. Uh, and the reason why I chose those two uh, practicum sites is that I really want to be exposed to very different experiences. So the first one is way more research focused and this one is direct practice. Um, and I think that's one thing that a lot of the Brown School field advisors would recommend, which is try things that you haven't tried before. I never knew that I would work with children. Um, it's very daunting to me. And a lot of direct practitioners talk about how like, oh, kudos to people who work with children. I could never. Um, and I kind of bought into that as well. And I thought to myself, I needed to challenge myself. And I think the thing is a lot of the people at the field office, including Atia, uh, all are very encouraging of students pursuing things that are outside of our comfort zone. So I got recommended to the site that I'm currently work at, um, and I love it. Uh, and I may consider working with children uh, in the future. And I think that's just something that I would never be exposed to if not because of Brown School. Yeah, Felicity, that is so well said, and it's just so exciting to hear um, about your passion and all of that. And so I just want to start. So I'm an MPH student, so it works a little bit differently with practicum. We only are required to do one practicum, which is different than Felicity doing two for MSW. Um, so this past summer, I worked with the Institute for Public Health um, here at the Brown School. So I was specifically looking more into violence prevention and kind of echoing what Felicity said. That wasn't really top of my interest coming in, but it was a really cool way to get exposed into St. Louis and kind of like how Shana was showing the different neighborhoods, like there's just a lot going on in different places and a lot of the violence prevention that is happening is a place based. Um, so I was working with the Cardiff model, which is using police data and hospital health data and kind of like looking at where the gaps were. Um, I also did some modeling, like again, looking at different um, neighborhoods and kind of like if there's a gas station here, and a liquor store here, like what is the risk here with that? And so although it was more like research focused, I still have the opportunity to work, to work with the um, St. Louis Violence Prevention Commission. Um, so again, that's a collaboration here working with gun violence prevention specifically. But for me, it was really cool to see like some of the other leaders outside of WashU working within this field. And so I think it was just a great way to like one, be in a research academic setting, but also like take that work and make it applicable to um, people that are embedded in these communities and also doing the work. So I think that's just like a really cool aspect that we are all able to come together and work um, with a common goal here in St. Louis as a whole. Thank you both for sharing that. I'm just really um, inspired by both of you. And I think it's, you know, it's been a real honor because you have both worked in the Office of Admissions for two years now. And um, it's been really just, like I said, an honor to see, you know, your growth and hear about your practicum experiences. And it's so cool to hear how you've really stretched yourself and, and put yourself in different situations. So um, kudos to both of you. Um, I want to zoom out a little bit. And so we've talked about a lot of site work. Um, I want to zoom out um, to talk about just St. the St. Louis region in general. Um, all of your um, experts in, in your own areas. So um, in your opinion, what are the greatest challenges and opportunities to social work, public health, or social policy in the St. Louis region? How about a TF? Would you like to start? Oh, perfect. Great. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to jump in, actually. Um, so when I first came back to Washington University in 2015, I had the honor of getting to work on a project called For the Sake of All, which was being led by Professor Jason Purnell, who's now head of the McDonald Foundation. So the trajectory of our students, our alum, and our faculty are really um, vast and wide and impactful. So I had the chance to work on For the Sake of All, and I am going to share a link um, in the chat because I want students to understand this was just a really great, con This, the, the beginning of this work, it's now called health equity work, but the beginning of this work was a, was a wonderful collaboration between Washington University and St. Louis University and community. 
identifying health disparities in the United, in St. Louis region and how racialized they were. So when you talk about big challenges, I'm kind of getting into Kate's area of public health, right? But I had the chance to work on For the Sake of All before it evolved in the Health Equity Works. And it was so eye-opening, this study, looking at the health disparities in St. Louis. And one of the most significant sort of takeaways that people walked away with when they heard about this um, was that just right here in St. Louis, I actually live in the Clayton area, which is really close to Washington University, but just nine miles from here, we have areas and the differences in not just quality of life, but something as uh, quantifiable as life expectancy. And there were like um, nine plus years difference in life expectancy in areas that were only separated by um, several miles. And so Health Equity Works was bringing this to life. Um, this has been a while, seven, eight years ago. And that work has since really evolved. It's really evolved into everything from like school-based health centers to a whole network of community health workers. So it's not, it's not, it wasn't just because of Health Equity Works, but it was this incredible um, mobilizing around this research to say like, wow, health disparities, particularly by race, um, are significant in our region. And this is a huge challenge. And there are so many ways that we are actually now addressing it. And so if you get a chance, take a look at that. But that's just one example. I know um, some before the Brown School, I worked in a nonprofit in the St. Louis community. And um, I remember when that report came out, Etienne, it was so um, just so impactful. I was working with communities that were impacted by that work. And um, yeah, thank you for thank you for talking through that. Um, yeah. Shana, I can share. Can you hear me? You can't hear me. Okay, sorry. I'm not sure what's going on. Um, Atia, I'm so glad that you elevated the work of for the sake of all and health equity works and um friend, high five because I didn't know you were doing that work. That's amazing. <laughs> And I think this really goes back for me to what Darrell was talking about, right, about St. Louis really being a community of disparity and opportunity. And before I came here to the Brown School, I spent close to 20 years in direct practice with families and communities in a variety of settings. And what I have seen in my time, I'm not a native St. Louis and disclaimer, um, but I've been here long enough to probably qualify as one sort of, um, but what I've seen is an incredible shift. We still have work to do, but the shift from siloing of resources to true collaboration. And I think particularly we haven't yet talked about the impact of COVID, but one of the things that has come out of the pandemic, in addition to people having to be incredibly nimble and responsive in ways they never thought about uh, before, and the, um, you know, kind of ripping of bandages off of the terrible scab of racism and racialized disparities, particularly in our region, is that it now has opened the door for really meaningful, deep collaborative work across healthcare organizations, behavioral health, which is where I sat before I came to the Brown School. And, you know, going back to some of the statistics Shana shared before about things like uh, maternal uh, child health and some of, again, the, the really, really stark disparities that, that we have uncovered and, and begun to talk about. Um, there's so much meaningful collaborative work going on, and we have the um, the great privilege to be able to connect students to that work in communities in ways that probably five years ago weren't even possible. Okay, I'll talk. Um, I want to recognize that Washington University is built on the land of the Osage, the Lainai, Missouri people. It was built by, I'm going to guess slate. We don't really talk about it much. Um, and what I believe now I'm seeing in our classes is the intersection 
of mental health disparity and identity-based work. We get into this work because we care about a population. We care about ourselves. Maybe we've been affected. Maybe we're trying to impact policy or advocacy or programming for ourselves, our population, our people and the impact that it's taking, the toll that it's taking. Um, weaving more community care and the culture of care into our work, um, holding space for the discomfort, knowing that the discomfort is real. But when we're talking about the genocide and the marginalization of our ancestors, and then we're trying to do this work, it, it creates a, a huge toll. So really weaving in um, energy work and somatic mental health care, even into policy spaces, uh, especially because one of our alumni who was a Brown School graduate, uh, public health graduate, the honorable Cora Faith Walker that we lost um, from the work uh, due to multiple disparities, um, and the impact and the toll that it can take. So I highlight and honor the work that she did and the teacher that she is, that we can learn from her to integrate and really think about the mental health impact on us as we're doing this work. Um, and and to, so we can keep going, so we can see that shift. So I wanna weave in more community care for ourselves and for the people that we're working with and for. Awesome, can I jump in? Yeah, um, because of the vast um, challenges, there's so many opportunities. I think um, what I would wanna say is, as I was listening to everyone talk, that, you know, they've hit on all of the major points. And so I don't need to just talk to talk, but I want to, to highlight um, that St. Louis is a very small place. So we have, I think over, I think it's, is it 90 municipalities? So like these very small districts of areas, um, which is really interesting when I was a student here, um, but because it's so small, whenever you get involved with any project or initiative, you it's very possible that you you would be a part of um, something that impacts you know a large population. You might find yourself rubbing elbows with major leaders in the city, in the municipalities, in these organizations, CEO, executive directors. Um, we have our uh, you know a very well world renowned uh, medical uh, school. Um, and, and so you'll find yourself being a part of this work and, and you could possibly, you know, be a part of real change, helping to write policy, helping to reimagine what's possible. Um, and because of the, the, the way that St. Louis is, it's a very small um, place, you're able to make a great impact um, very shortly. And so that's the only thing I would like to, to, to highlight. There are a lot of opportunities to do great work. Thank you, Jarrell. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I thank you all so much. Um, I cannot believe it's 1256 already. I think I could keep talking for um, hours with all of you, um, but I wanna be mindful of time. And I wanna just, I would love to just end um, going around um, just real quickly. Um, if everyone could give just like one piece of lasting advice for our prospective students, prospective students, admitted students, anyone else on the call, just as you're thinking about um, your decision and coming to St. Louis, what's one piece of advice you would you would leave with our with our attendees today about about the St. Louis area and moving and studying here? And Felicity, we'll go. We can just go, Felicity Courtney. Start with you. I, I was very inspired too by what we were um, just talking about the impact that we can make and how it's just so easy to see the impact of a work in St. Louis. I think that's something that I wish I should have known earlier uh, before coming to the Brown School, which is treating 
all the classes, all the assignments as an opportunity to make impact because they do like you can yield impact by doing some of your assignments. Like I think for some of our classes, um, I'm writing a paper on identifying some of the weaknesses or uh, area of growth at my current practicum site. And I'm so passionate about this assignment because I know that they're gonna take it seriously. And some of the suggestion I make will eventually lead to like tangible change and impact. Um, and I think if all students can come to the Brown School with that mindset, like these are not just busy work, these are not just assignments, they are vehicles to tangible impact I think you would feel more connection to the work that you are doing, um, to the every, I don't know, words that you laid on the paper. Um, yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, short and sweet, but I, I do think just like the community aspect of St. Louis is unmatched. And I think as a prospective students on this call, as you like move through making your decision, I think for me, I had been in St. Louis before making my decision, but I think that's honestly what kept me in St. Louis. And I think a lot of people move to St. Louis, oh, I'm only going to be here for X amount of years, and then you just never leave and you're here. And I think that there is something very special about St. Louis that I think can get overlooked because of whatever is going on in the great state of Missouri or the country. But um, I think it is a really special place and it's like very community driven and it's really easy to get involved here. For those of you that might not know, Missouri, we're kind of known as the heartland. And so the pulse of change is radiating out from the heartland. So just know that there's a long history of that in the state. And um, as Bell Hook said, lead with love. Just to echo that, we are known as the place where the rivers meet. I uh, hope you come here and learn more about that. And in the place where the rivers meet, there's a. this is the meeting place of so many people and big ideas. We're practically in the middle of the nation, um, but it's an in interesting synergy and there's so much opportunity. And honestly, having family and friends who um, work and live on the different coast, I want to say that one of the Play, access. Access is so incredible here because it's just greater. Not just the cost of living, but um, honestly, the network, the human network. And that's the much richer asset that you have so much access to here. And so in the meeting of, in the place where the meeting, where the rivers meet, this is also a great place to come and meet with your destiny, to meet with us, to be a big fish in a small pond, as people like to say. And, um, we hope that you'll join us. No, I'm not going. That was, that was, no, that was the end. Mic drop, the place where the rivers meet. I'm stealing that. Um, I would, I would just want to say, um, if I were a student who's thinking about coming to this program, um, the advice that I would have given a younger version of myself was it's a journey. You know, it's it's a journey. Come be a student, be a, you know, be a friend, have time off, take spring break seriously, you know, um, go to the park, you know, have some good self-care. Um, but it's a journey. And I when I entered in, I had a, a you know, a lot of expectations because um, our program is and has always been one or, or number two ranking um, of all programs in social work, which I'm very proud of. Um, but, and also being more realistic about what that means and what that looks like, prestige and the Washu brand and the county versus the city and all of the things, you know, it's a journey. It's a journey um, and, it, and it is uh, a process um, and it'll change you and it will change the world. But uh, yeah, it's a journey. I don't know that I have that much to add. There's got to be a delay. <laughs> okay, well, besides my audio delay, um, that is just a message to everyone to just be prepared and flexible as you come into this work, right? Um, because you never know what you're going to face from day to day or minute to minute. 
Um, and I think coming here to the Brown School, everybody has spoken so well and so genuinely about what this experience could mean. You will work hard. You will be expected to work hard. So uh, if that makes you a little nervous, that's understandable. Come with curiosity and lead with an open heart. Wow, that was beautifully said. Um, all of you just have a way with words. <laughs> so um, really, truly. Um, thank you all so much. Um, I know we went over by a few minutes, but I, I felt like it was worth it. So um, I would thank you all so much for all of your advice, um, your perspective. Um, I want to thank all of the attendees. Um, most of you are probably prospective or admitted students. So um, please feel free to reach out to us. We are like a very transparent, open team here, and we would welcome connecting with you. Um, I know we didn't get to any live questions. It, it looks like most of them were answered. Um, so thank you for people, to the people for, to answer for it to the people who answered those. Um, I really appreciate that. Um, if you have any other questions that were not answered, please reach out to the Office of Admissions, uh, Brown Admissions at wustl.edu and we will be happy to connect with you, connect you to um, any of our panelists. Um, uh, or you can come to the Brown School and you can learn from them in person. Um, so thank you all again so much. Um, I want to invite also um, all of our students to attend our Admitted Students Week, which is next week. I'm sure you've gotten a lot of communication about that, um, but we're going to be starting on Monday, the 27th, with our virtual programming. And then Saturday, the 1st, is our in-person um, Admitted Students uh, Day first one we've had since the pandemic. So we're all really excited to, to meet everyone in person um, and to connect with you. So thank you again. I can't say it enough. Thank you to all of our panelists, students, faculty, staff. Elizabeth, did you have, oh, were you just waving? Oh, okay. Didn't know if you're raising your hand. Um, okay. I think that's all we have. Have a great day, everyone. Talk to you soon.